life. From the deepest oceans to the highest peaks, our world simply teems with life. But to begin studying life in the world around us, we have little else to do than open our front door. Today we study a familiar animal native to almost anywhere. This is the human animal. The human animal is a complex and fascinating organism able to survive, adapt, and flourish in virtually any ecosystem. More fascinating still is the myriad of trials this magnificent creature must undergo to practice the rites of mating. In the course of this study, we will examine the physical, behavioral, and social dimensions of human attraction, in which both science and luck play principal roles. This is Shortclaw, an exemplary male of his species. Shortclaw is average in virtually every way. Like other animals do every day, Shortclaw must engage in the act of basic grooming before he sets about his routine. With his trusty, nimble paws, grooming is a simple task indeed. Shortclaw must pay close attention to his teeth, however, as they not only serve for tearing into his next meal, when clean, they may also attract a mate. Unlike the mighty shark or Bengal tiger, humans mustn't always hunt to attain food. Rather, like the bear, food is most often attained through the act of foraging. This dry cereal poses no challenge for Shortclaw's capable jaws. Why, in no time at all, he's ready to set out for the day. Little does Shortclaw know, today is not like any other day. Today, he will begin his rites of mating. Human mating behavior begins with two essential complementary hormones, testosterone and estrogen. Abundance of testosterone in male humans permits them to compete well against their peers. Estrogen, on the other hand, promotes growth of a female human's secondary sexual characteristics, such as the breasts. Though Shortclaw has taken notice of such characteristics, his window of opportunity is closing. What else is afoot that may make a world of difference? Well, pheromones, a specific type of hormone, are chemicals released outside the body that trigger a social response from other animals. Sex pheromones are released involuntarily by humans, announcing availability at a chemical level. It definitely seems to have caught Shortclaw's attention. Endorphins are endogenous opioid peptides, a particular type of neurotransmitter present in both male and female humans. When endorphins are released by the pituitary gland, they release a general sense of warm euphoria that prevents feelings of pain and anxiety at a spinal level. Following abrupt injury, endorphins permit animals to muster their strength and run to safety. But what, aside from extreme pain and discomfort, can reliably trigger an endorphin release? Love. Passion, extreme sexual attraction. Because Shortclaw does not yet exhibit proper mating behavior, this window of opportunity has passed. When studying the social behavior of higher mammals, certain trends specific to mating become apparent. Heightened aggression, changes in eating behavior, and particularly for Shortclaw, extensive grooming. Predominantly, the male will prepare his finest appearance for the sake of winning the attention of the most attractive female. This behavior 
in the case of human males like Shortclaw, is called peacocking. Now decorated in distinctive, eye-catching color and texture, Shortclaw is ready to take another shot. We find ourselves now at the watering hole, a popular destination for male humans to impress their female counterparts. Here, Shortclaw awaits the opportunity to engage a lone female. But such a task will not be easy. Shortclaw must demonstrate his competency as a suitor in a variety of dimensions if he is to secure a mate. He cannot be too eager, else he will spook the females at a distance, thinning his prospects. Shortclaw's instincts guide him to exhibit two essential qualities of attraction. First, he must be an alpha dog, taking charge whenever possible. Second, he must take initiative in the selection of his mate. And what have we here? This delightful specimen has already been engaged by a lesser male. Note his posture, very forward. He expresses his attraction too eagerly. Without presenting a gift or maintaining eye contact, this male's encounter is sure to stagnate. Taking initiative in pre-selection, Shortclaw moves in. With a slight bump, Shortclaw has already made the female, let's call her long hair, aware of his presence while nonchalantly failing to acknowledge hers. Brilliant. He has only to prepare an offering for a suitable introduction. And he's in. All that remains prior to courtship is dispensing with the meager competition. Knowing his course is run, the inferior male retreats. But Shortclaw still has a great distance to travel. You see, by buying a drink for both himself and long hair, Shortclaw demonstrates that he is capable of caring for her needs in very basic ways. Note his sustained eye contact and occasional physical advances. These are called Kino Escalation. As Shortclaw wins long hair's trust, he makes her progressively more comfortable to his touch by extending small, physical gestures. As the night wears on, Longhair's attraction to Shortclaw is apparent. Her hips are turned fully toward him, her eyes are locked into his, and the Kino escalation has been reciprocated and sustained. Now, she gives him the most important signal of all. Success. The mating ritual begins. Like countless other creatures in the animal kingdom, the human rights of mating begin with their own chase. Dance. And revelry. Humans invariably mate for one of two purposes, each well founded in its own right. The instinct to reproduce, or simple recreational enjoyment. For young specimens like these, one can only assume it is the latter that motivates them. Shortclaw's stamina is waning. He cannot go on for much longer. The act has been completed. Upon climax, the male releases hundreds of millions of sperm all contending to achieve meiotic reproduction in at least one viable egg. In most cases, only one will prevail. When contraceptive measures are taken, however, the odds against the sperm worsen exponentially. The night has culminated in satisfaction for Shortclaw, but for Longhair, there is no such comfort. What follows the human mating ritual can be any of three possible scenarios. Parenthood, companionship, or an awkward goodbye. 
Despite Shortclaw's naive optimism, this is goodbye. He will almost certainly never mate with long hair a second time, but his experience has made him ever the more proficient a suitor. The testosterone has been bolstered, the endorphins have been released, the trials of mate selection have been won, and the well-cultivated instincts of human mating have prevailed. And so, we bid farewell to the marginally above-average Shortclaw, thus concluding this riveting installment of The Human Animal.